Hello and welcome to the 2020 DCU Hybrid Student Media Awards. We are here, we are finally here. The night that so many of you have been building up towards the whole year has finally arrived. A little bit later than planned, in a little bit of a different fashion than usually takes place, but nevertheless, tonight it is the hybrids and it has arrived. I'm so excited, thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm your host, my name is Jazz Keen. Uh, I'm one half of the Zoo Crew on Spin1038 and I'm also an esteemed, can you say esteemed about yourself? I'm a very proud DCU alumni. Uh, I study communications, I graduated in 2017 uh, and I was also a deputy station manager of DCU FM in my final year but I was a DCU FM head all through uh, and I'm still a very proud DCU guy. I must mention it on the radio at least once a week. Um, and I'm absolutely thrilled to be your host tonight. I was a judge at last year's hybrids and I was absolutely buzzed about it. So I'm honoured to be the host tonight. Albeit a, albeit a virtual host. I've never done a virtual hosting gig before. Um, it's fun. I mean, we are coming to you live tonight from my spare room. It's a spare room. It's just nothing. There's nothing here. You know? But that's the beauty of it. I mean, I was originally going to do this from my bedroom, but I asked my mom, could I host a load of rowdy college kids from my bedroom? And she said, absolutely not. No way is that happening. So my spare room will have to do. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, we are coming live from my spare room to your room, your house, wherever you are this evening. Uh, I hope you are excited for a fantastic night of celebration of content from the year that has been. Um, I remember when I was in DCU, like the hybrids was the pinnacle of the year. It was always the night that everyone was building up towards. You put in so much work for it. It's a celebration of the year that has been. And it's also like a little bit of a, a moment to remind yourself of everything that has been over the year. Because the content that you produce has been based around and is from the year that has been. So you're also getting reminded of the huge things that have happened in the year. So it's a celebration in many, many uh, of many many things tonight uh, and I'm so excited to be here for you. Uh, as you know it's been a crazy year I'm not going to harp on about coronavirus and lockdown and stuff but th this is why it's so different tonight hence why it's a virtual event hence why it's later in the year lots of things go into it but nevertheless we must celebrate but one thing that I've said to so many people and that I have thought about the year that has been although there is so many negative aspects for it and it is it's a worldwide pandemic for a reason. You always have to look at the bright side of things uh, and try and take positivity from where you can. And one of the things that I've been thinking about the whole thing is the more time you've had to yourself and downtime and not in work, not in college, being in lockdown for creatives, which you all are, we all are, it has been a moment to be creative in many different ways. Like if you've put time and effort into starting a podcast, taking more pictures, editing more videos, you probably have had the time that you wouldn't have had ever. So that's one of the things that I have kept in my head throughout this whole time. You have to take the positives where you can. And I think it has been a fun time for creatives. Maybe you don't see it that way. Maybe by me saying this, you might think about it differently, but Creativity knows no bounds, and this is another opportunity for creativity to strive. One of the things that I did when in lockdown, had a little bit of more time obviously, was learn some tunes on the tin whistle. Now, I'm not very good. Um, I'm a DJ by nature, like I, I never really play instruments, um, but I decided to have a crack at a few things, and haven't played in a few weeks. I was doing this at the start of lockdown, but I thought for you tonight, I will crack out the tin whistle and play one of the things that I have learned. I apologize if this is bad. I'm not doing another take. Okay, hang on, I have to do this. Thank you, thank you very much. That was, of course, traditional Irish 50 cent candy shop on the tin whistle. That was just one of the things I learned when in lockdown. 
I decided to put my time into something different and that's what came of it. I also learned another tune that I might play for you at the end as a celebration. It's more of an upbeat celebration song, but I'll play for you at the end. And um, of course, tonight's event, The Hybrids, is all in aid of a fantastic charity in the INAOR, and that is the Irish Network Against Racism. Uh, it's a fantastic charity. They're the voice of anti-racism in Ireland, uh, and some of the things they do and what they are is a national network of over 100 anti-racism civil organisations. Uh, they aim to work together to address and highlight uh, racism in Ireland through promotion uh, and monitoring Irish, EU and global trends in anti-racist initiatives. I have a little spiel here, I'm running off, but obviously with everything that's going on in the world, uh, the INAOR is a fantastic charity. Um, they do loads of work, loads of brilliant campaigns. I was on their website just having a look at some of the things they do. Uh, wonderful campaigns, initiatives and work. And of course, if you'd like to get more info uh, and donate, their website is inaor.ie. You can have a look at everything they do. There's a big donate button. Uh, and I definitely urge you to have a look at it and have a look at some of the work they're doing. Uh, and of course, donate if you can, because your money will go towards helping a fantastic co cause. inaor.ie is the website. Um, okay, almost time to get into it. So much coming up um, in tonight's event. Lots of lovely awards, so much great content that we get to celebrate tonight. Some of the awards coming up tonight. Journalist of the Year, Photographer of the Year, Entertainment Show of the Year, Documentary, Promo Video of the Year. So many more. So many wonderful judges who have been listening to and thinking about your content uh, that we all get to celebrate tonight. Some of the lucky few will be winning awards, but regardless of if you win, whatever. Tonight is about celebrating everything that has happened over the last year uh, and all the amazing effort, work, time, blood, sweat, tears that you've put into your entries, that you've put into creating this fantastic content over the year. Um, let's get into it. This is the 2020 DCU Hybrid Student Media Awards. Here we go. Here we go. Award number one is for News Piece of the Year and the judge is Connor Fian. Connor Fian is a Dublin based journalist, an esteemed journalist, more than 20 years of work to show for himself. He has worked in the Herald, the Irish Independent and also is a winner of News Reporter of the Year, which makes him extremely qualified to judge tonight's hybrid. Judging News Piece of the Year, Connor Fian. Hello, my name is Conor Feehan. I work with the Irish Independent, the Herald and Independent.ie and I've been asked to judge the TV news piece of the year. Uh, in second place, I chose Dara Brown. When you look at the Clear the Head campaign uh, story, I thought it was a good story put together during pandemic times when there's obvious restrictions on how a person can move around and record. The lockdown restrictions meant that camera people couldn't go to people's houses, that people couldn't gather to do the interviews, but I thought it was clever the way it was put together because it was using social media posts and interviewees' own home done videos, um, which were edited together nicely. Uh, I thought the, um, the story moved along quite well and it kept the interest, uh, but it also, it captured the fun of the event of cutting your own hair, shaving your head for charity, but also that married well with the seriousness of the, the topic uh, that was being discussed. And there were some personal stories in there too, which I thought always does add to a, to a good production if you can learn something about the individuals taking part and their own backgrounds and their own families. I, I think personal stories tell a story better than, uh, than just somebody who's, who's not, not personally involved in, in, in a particular uh, topic. So then uh, to choose the, um, the, the winner of the category were, was, was interesting, but to me, um, I chose Louis Flanagan. Uh, when I was looking at the Love Always Charlie production, uh, I thought that um, it, it moved along at a very nice pace. There was a very good mix of interviews and cutaways. In fact, the, the standard of the cutaways in, in the piece was, was incredible. Um, I, I thought that, 
the way it, it, it moved, like the, the cutaways panned and moved and focused in, focused out. Uh, I, I thought it kind of kept the viewer very engaged in the piece. And there was a good mix then, a good ratio of cutaways to interviewees. Um, the, the cutaways as well, they also matched the narrative as well. Uh, there was one point um, when the interviewees were talking about friendships and the, the, the cutaways matched that precisely. So there was, there was a lot of thought put into that. Um, as well as that, I thought, again, that David Cotter's own personal input, uh, his, 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 um, his honesty was refreshing. Uh, he talked about music in his own life growing up and, and how he felt and how that related uh, to the to the story being told, so overall, I thought um, I thought Louis Flanagan's work um, was superior. Thank you. All right, our next award is Radio Documentary of the Year, and to judge is Pat O'Mahony. Pat is a Dublin-based radio and TV producer, presenter, and director. Uh, he has produced an, an Emmy award winning series called Producers at War. He's also been producing for RT Radio 1 and 2FM since 2010, producing shows like The Marty Morrissey Show and for Ryan Tuberty as well. Uh, we feel, of course, that Pat's biggest achievement to date is being a former DCU student where he sat as chair of MPS. Uh, Pat graduated from DCU in 1986. Judging Radio Documentary of the Year, Pat O'Mahony. Hi, guys. Uh, thank you for asking me to judge uh, one of the categories of the hybrids. It's been a few years. Um, and I think the last time I may have done the radio documentary section as well. So when I was asked this year uh, to judge it, I said, uh, sure. Uh, how many entries do you think you might get? What duration? And they said maybe eight entries. They might be about maybe 10 minutes each. Uh, the winner this year is the winner by default because there was only one entry um, in these uh, very weird uh, coronavirus times. Uh, I know it took extra effort uh, to enter. Uh, and so maybe that explains why there was only uh, one entry, um, which goes to show sometimes in this business, the old if you don't ask, you don't get cliche still holds. Um, simply by entering um, this entry one. There you go. Um, what I liked about uh, the documentary was that it was a very simple idea, uh, simply executed. Now, a simple idea sometimes is all you need. In fact, usually the simpler, the better. This one you felt had some sort of personal connection to the producer, um, even if because of their gender, uh, this may be a tenuous one, but uh, it was something they'd given some thought to, so that was obvious. Um, this isn't always necessary, of course. Um, sometimes a good idea is just a good idea, uh, whatever your personal involvement is. Uh, and ideas, as I've, I've said a million times, are the lifeblood of all media. If you have a good idea, uh, you're halfway there. Well, maybe not halfway, but you're on the road. This wasn't a perfect radio documentary by any means. Um, very few creative products actually are. Um, people will always find fault, uh, no matter how much work you've put into it, no matter how much you've sweated over it. Um, but if the producer wants to give me a shout anytime, I'm more than happy to go through it with them. Um, to let them know what I thought worked and what I thought didn't work and how it could be improved. It would be my purely my personal take on it and always with advice, you take some of it, you ignore other bits of it. So happy to do that, but they did win. Um, so we do have a winner in the radio documentary of the year category. And I'm delighted to say the winner is Boys Will Be Boys by Roisin McCardle. Well done, Roisin. Our next award is for Photographer of the Year, and judging this is Dragana. 
The captivating Dragana's photography journey began in September 1991 when her family apartment burned down. Since then, she's been exploring the power that photography holds over our memory through her work. Uh, she now lives in Dublin. She is an assistant professor here in DCU where she enthralls students with the wonderful and powerful world of photography. Judging photographer of the year is Dragana. So the category for photograph, uh, photographer of the year is I really immensely enjoyed looking at the work and to see also what great talent we have in this year at the moment. And without any further ado, I would like to uh, award uh, Satisha Mohan uh, as uh, Photographer of the Year 2020 for her brilliant portfolio of images depicting mixed martial arts fighters fighting in arena. Uh, you can really feel the sweat and blood and pain uh, and exhaustion of these fighters. Um, I would say you potentially very likely have a career in as a sports photographer, a profession where sadly we don't see many women, uh, but you also have a really great sensibility in photographing people and catching their emotions. And this could carry you across to the fine art photography as well. So um, sky is the limit. Well done. Uh, and the runner-up in this category is uh, Roshin McCardle, who submitted uh, three images that were not thematically connected, but they were all uh, done to a really high standard and brilliantly executed. So, well done, Roshin. I hope you're all well and that you're enjoying um, your summer. Thank you. Bye. Now we move on to Photograph of the Year and judging this category again is Dragana. Uh, not only has she had a huge career, she has won awards such as the INMA 1000 Residency Award and also the Golden Fleece Special Recognition Award. Judging Photograph of the Year once again is Dragana. And I just want to say that I really enjoyed uh, judging the category of Photograph of the year uh, and the team this year was resistance which I thought uh, is a relevant team for the times we are living through. The winner for the category photograph of the year this year 2020 is Conor O'Neill for his image of DCU drama society pantomime in which we see a girl trying to fight off uh, a horde of zombies all by herself. Uh, the image has a great mood to it, uh, it's also done in a very challenging light situation which is kind of low lighting um, but you still manage to capture uh, the photograph to a quite high standard. Um, so really well done Connor. And uh, the runner up in this category is Jim Z. Johnson for the image of a daisy in a field well, it's a one flower that is managed to stay upright in a field of uh, kind of destroyed flowers, either by footfall or by weather. And I found this image quite symbolic. So this is why I gave it um, a prize of a runner-up for the category of a photograph of the year. So well done, Jim. Uh, thank you. Our next award is for News and Current Affairs Journalist of the Year and judging this category is Amy Malloy. The multi-talented Amy Malloy is currently sitting as Public Affairs Correspondent with Independent News and Media. The Westwood woman has carried out award-winning journalism and investigations into the housing crisis in Ireland and in 2018 she was awarded Upcoming Business Journalist of the Year and Young Journalist of the Year. Maybe categories for next year's hybrids. Judging News and Current Affairs Journalist of the Year is Amy Malloy. Hi, Amy Malloy from the Irish Independent here. Um, just want to say a huge thanks for asking me to be a judge for this year's Hybrid Awards. Obviously, it's very unfortunate that the event can't happen in person. Um, hence why I'm doing this video in my dodgy homemade office. <laughs> um, 
but needs must and all that. Um, I've just spent the last couple of days reading to the various entries for the news and current affairs category and I was incredibly impressed by the standard of writing and the topics chosen. Um, there was a lot of originality there in particular and yeah, coming to an overall decision was quite tough. But for me, there was one standout person. Um, kind of the reason I kind of came to my overall decision was I was just looking at the kind of standard of Irish journalism in general over the last couple of years. And there has been quite a lot of standout stories which have led to real change. Um, do you know the FAI and John Delaney story by the Sunday Times eventually led to his resignation. The Irish Independent um, had that story about Maria Bailey and her questionable compensation claim which eventually led to her fall from grace as a TD. And I think, you know, if you ask any student journalist why they actually got into journalism, you know, a lot of people that I found in my own class anyway would have said it was the potential to make a difference, as corny as that sounds. Um, and that's why I came to the decision of awarding Anya Boyle as News and Current Affairs Journalist of the Year. Um, I think in particular Anya's piece on the rent increases probably played a huge factor in DCU deciding to overturn that decision to hike the rents by 4%. You know, it's a story which was kind of followed up by a lot of national organisations, including my own. Um, and I think it displayed good journalism because that story arose from Aston. D DCU COO, do you know, UCD are hiking their rents, is, is the same thing going to happen here? Um, so, do you know, that that's a good quality in a journalist, you know, just being curious and seeing how is this going to impact my own college. Um, so I thought that was excellent and obviously it's great that the rents aren't going to be hiked now. And then her interview with the DCU student facing deportation I thought was also quite powerful and, you know, hopefully kind of helped make somewhat of a difference. Um, you know, I think personal interviews always always kind of resonate with people so I thought it was a very well written piece um, so congrats on you and well done um, and then as a very close runner up I have gone with Dylan O'Neill I thought Dylan's pieces were very well written and kind of showed a lot of originality um, in particular the burning fast burning out piece um, as a young journalist that's something which resonated with myself um, I just thought you know you showed kind of Good, good groundwork there by going out and getting your own case studies um, and then obviously your piece on being lesbian, guardy, bisexual, trans in Ireland I thought was excellent also and featured a lot of different voices and people from different backgrounds and I just thought it was very well written and well put together um, and obviously it's, it's a very topical subject at the moment. Um, so yeah, congrats to you both, well done. Hopefully you can have a little glass of wine home to celebrate. Um, and I have no doubt that I'll be seeing your bylines at some national publications in the future. So congrats again. All right, moving on to our next award. This award is for Blog of the Year and judging is Florence Olofemi Ojo. Florence is a 26-year-old Nigerian-born Irish blogger. On her blog, MoldedInsideOut.com, she shares her life, travel, beauty, and she also operates MIO Prints, which sell bonnets, hair wraps, fans, pyjamas and aprons in African Prince, Ankara and Kente. Judging Blog of the Year is Florence Olufemi Ojo. Hi guys, how are you all doing? My name is Florence. I am a blogger at Moded Inside Out. Um, I want to say a huge thank you to the DCU Media Society, um, DMPS. <laughs> I hope I'm saying that right. Oh, sorry, the, the DCU Media Production Society. Apologies. Thank you so much for having me on as a um, guest, as a so a judge on the panel for the iBird event coming up on the 24th of July. I'm also here to just announce Niall Riley as the winner um, of the blog for the year. Um, it was so nice reading your blog post, Niall. Um, you, you had your language was so I like how you use your language to capture my thoughts and my opinion as a reader. And um, you were able to also just bring me into your world. Um, and if like two minutes of reading your you know your your post. I really could resonate with a lot, a lot of the feelings you have um, and just like college in general like I, I think um, very true you know the relationship the relationships we make in college are the things that keep us going um, through the challenging times through assignments to, <laughs> through CAs and all that kind of stuff so yeah it was really I could re definitely resonate so well done on being able to touch on my mind and well, well done on being able to I suppose bring me back um, down memory lane and yeah I'm super excited for you I our next award is for DJ of the Year. The person who is judging DJ of the Year is currently one half of the Zoo Crew on Spin 1038 and Spin Southwest. He also presented Spin Extra on Spin 1038 before moving on to the Zoo Crew. 
He started his career in radio in DCUFM, where he was always involved in DCUFM and served as deputy station manager in his final year. He is also very charming, funny, attractive, quick-witted, intelligent, courageous and bold and intelligent and funny and good-looking uh, and more importantly an Egypt and a chancer. Judging DJ of the year is me! Hello! I hope you are all having a wonderful evening at tonight's hybrids. I can't get over the host. He's doing such a fantastic job. You guys are so lucky. Uh, wow. Uh, my name is Jazz Keen and I'm judging radio DJ of the year this year's hybrids. Um, it's so it's so lovely being here as a judge and as the host. Uh, but I thought I'd change things up. Welcome to the Spin Studio. Uh, and also I brought some memorabilia. I brought my hybrid <laughs> from when I won it in 2017 for Arts and Feature Show of the Year. So I just felt with this here, I'll be able to give a good uh, award for Radio DJ of the Year. Um, really good entries this year for Radio DJ of the Year. Uh, really enjoyed listening to them all. Um, each of them had different things that were all really, really, really good. So all entries, uh, well done to all of you. They're really enjoyable to listen to. Some really good bits in them all. Um, and when it came to picking um, my favourite or the best, um, I really thought that the winner, the one I've picked for Radio DJ of the Year, for me, it had everything that a radio DJ should have. Um, there was music passion in there. Um, Coming off and going into songs was slick. Back announcing was was good and the right length. Going into songs kind of rolled over intros and stuff, which it's it's just it's very radio jock and it just sounds how it should be. Um, there was uh, yeah good flow going into songs. There was like relevant topical info about stuff that's going on. Like uh, TikTok was mentioned uh, in this entry, um, and it would it was just like stuff that you'd hear and expect to hear on a station. All stuff that really suits it. Um, there was a caller in the entry requesting a song. There was good back and forth between host and caller, which I thought was really natural, really good sounding. And also there was hooks and teases. So like a little bit of info of what's coming in five minutes that wanted me, me to stay listening to find out what it was, which is pretty much the number one thing that radio PDs look for in radio DJs and music presenters especially. They want you to keep the listener listening for longer. There was one of these in the entry and I was like, oh, what is that? I'll keep listening. So that was a huge box ticker for me. Uh, so really happy uh, with all the entries. Well done to all of you. Um, my runner up for radio DJ of the year is Rory Egan. And I'm absolutely delighted to present the award for radio DJ of the year for this year's hybrids. To Connor Farley. Well done. Well done. Jesus. Well, that last judge didn't try and steal the show at all. Who gave him time to speak? Right, moving on to our next award. This award is for Sports Journalist of the Year. And judging this award is Cahill Dennehy. Cahill is a freelance sports journalist whose work has appeared in the Irish Independent, the Irish Examiner, Runner's World, World of Athletics and The Guardian. Call has also been accredited by many awards such as Irish Sports Journalist of the Year 2019. And to top things off, Call is also a DCU Journalism alumni. Judging Sports Journalist of the Year, Call Dennehy. Hi everyone, my name is Cahill Dennehy. I'm a sports journalist and I write mainly for the Irish Independent and Irish Examiner newspapers. I'm also a graduate of DCU Journalism School many moons ago now at this stage. And I was delighted to be asked to judge this year's Sports Journalist of the Year category for the Hybrid Awards. And this year's winner is a young journalist who displayed exceptional credentials across her entry. Um, her talent in writing and accuracy was both informative and entertaining. One of her pieces was a piece for the College View, the newspaper that gave me my first bind line a few years back. Um, and that was a piece covering the best uh, golf courses across Ireland taking readers I suppose on a virtual tour of them what made them special another piece was for Golf Digest and that was a again a great insight into the history of Port Marnock Golf Course and what makes that such a special and revered place in golfing circles and finally probably my favourite piece from her three articles she submitted was a piece for the College View which covered DCU women's team and their historic victory in the National League last year and like any good journalist she didn't just report the what of the story she went a bit deeper and talk to the players, the managers, and kind of to understand and to get across the why and the how of that great historic success. 
And for that reason, this year's Sports Journalist of the Year winner is Dara Brown. Congrats, Dara. Our next award is for Journalist of the Year, and judging this is Zainab Boladel. Zainab is a talented TV journalist whose career started in DCU and has taken her all the way to RTE. She is also the co-founder of Beyond Representation, a platform that champions Irish women of colour who are breaking new grounds in Irish media, arts and business. Judging Journalist of the Year, Zaina Boladell. Hello everyone, my name is Zaina Boladell. I'm an RTE presenter and reporter. Now, I'm really happy to be announcing the 2020 Hybrid Award winner in the category of Journalist of the Year. The person who impressed me greatly was someone whose storytelling abilities I could see being used to tell stories in print, radio and TV. And I also felt like they kept their audience in mind when telling either news stories or writing feature articles. And that person I'm happy to announce is Roisin Phelan. And the runner up is Anya Sowers. Our next award is for Entertainment Video of the Year. And judging this award is Emmett Jones. Emmett's career began back in his days in DCU as he is an esteemed alumni of MPS. His work in podcasting and video as well as his experience in production has given him an established name in DCU. Judging Entertainment Video of the Year is Emmett Jones. Hey Jazz. Beautiful looking man. And hello to all of the MPSers and Journal Socks and College Views and everybody else that's here uh, over this uh, thing. It feels a little bit more like a the Eurovision, uh, that I should be given 12 points, deux points to Dylan McCrory, um, but it's great to be back at the hybrids uh, and judging entertainment video of the year. So I was delighted with the entries that I got, um, uh, I was delighted with the, the commitment and how all of the, the kind of the videos came together from subject matter to scripts to lighting and colour and production design and the Ahasarm Grev Cooper Dive Oscailga Kuma uh Vishinduk. I was a little bit disappointed with this category that there wasn't uh, more um brought in from girls because like gals you've got the talent all you need to do is put it out there but look there's always next year. Uh so my runner up was Rory Egan. I thought it was very well crafted in your video when you were jumping around um uh, asking people to sing their songs I thought it was very entertaining but my winner just for kind of pure class and how everything kind of came together and the lighting and design and everything would have to be Louis Flanagan with his music video so congratulations Louis uh, see you later and best of luck moving on to our next award this award is for poster of the year and judging this category is Laura Duffy Laura is an incredibly talented artist and illustrator based in Dublin. Her art has become widely recognised and loved around Ireland. As a former DCU student, she is an example for all our students that you can make a name for yourself and follow your dreams. Judging Poster of the Year is Laura Duffy. Hi everyone, my name is Laura Duffy. I am an artist and illustrator based here in Dublin and I make lots of funky artworks like the stuff behind me. And I am delighted to be asked to judge the poster of the year category for the DCU hybrids this year. So let's get straight into it. So first we have the runner up poster, which goes to Connor O'Neill and his poster for the Sunday soundtrack. This was a really cool poster. I loved the use of illustration as the main medium. I thought it made for a really unique design. So well done, Connor. And so the winner of the hybrid award for poster of the year 2020 goes to Lorcan O'Reilly and his poster for the passion exhibition. This was a really cool poster. I especially loved the composition and I thought the color palettes were really, really strong as well as the texture that you used over top of the poster. I thought it was really cool. So well done Lorcan and thank you again to DCU hybrids for allowing me to judge this category. I hope you all stay safe and stay well and keep up the amazing work. Bye. Our next award is for promo video of the year and judging this category once again is Emmett Jones. From personal experience, Emmett Jones is an MPS legend. 
all round nice guy was one of the go to people for any advice or information when I was starting out in MPS. He's a legend. He's also worked so much uh, as a freelance TV researcher, casting producer, and producer. He's a legend. And judging promo video of the year is Emmett Jones. Okay, so uh, promo highlight video of the year. So I was delighted with the entries in this category and how what how they pulled the videos together to highlight or promote the events that were going on uh, across the year. Um, I very simply, very straightforwardly, my runner up was Logan O'Reilly because of his use of graphics and how the, the skillful um, design and stuff that he used for the videos um, was excellent. But however, my winner, um, and there's a clear winner, was someone who tied up the event and kind of, it was very, very professionally done, we'll put it that way. Um, and uh, the fact that there was a bit of Guelga thrown in there as well was absolutely no harm. So uh, my winner, Fuator, uh promo highlight video of the year, no, uh, Rory Egan. Wahoo Rory. Our next award is for Entertainment Show of the Year and judging this category is James Mitchell. James Mitchell is a multi-talented multimedia guru. He is also currently a fan favourite on the popular Tri channel on YouTube. James is a DCU and MPS alumni and was a host for the 24-hour broadcast in 2017, the year they raised a whopping €15,000. Judging Entertainment Show of the Year, James Mitchell. What's up? My name's Andy and I am filling in for James Mitchell tonight as he said he was too much of a hot bitch to record a video for the hybrids. Um, I am happy to announce though that James has picked Isabella Finn for the Entertainment Show of the Year with Bella's Buzz. So congratulations, Isabella. Our next award is for Documentary of the Year and judging this award is Katrina Perry. Katrina is a multi-award winning journalist and she is currently co-anchor of the RTE 61 News. She was previously RTE's Washington correspondent where she worked across TV, radio and digital platforms reporting on politics of all sorts US related. Katrina has significant editorial experience and her work as a news anchor, presenter, documentary maker, producer and programme editor makes her the perfect fit for our judging panel. Judging Documentary of the Year is Katrina Perry. Hi, it's me again. So Katrina couldn't actually send a video to announce her winners. She has, however, passed on her results uh, along with some comments for her winner that I'm going to read out now. Katrina says, Congratulations! To Kate Gurren, Louis Flanagan, Aaron Lanan, Camila Abu and Sean Kennedy for making a really interesting documentary in Bay Keel, Reflections of an Empty City. The interviewees were really strong and although they may not see it as such, in their contributions they each prove that the city is far from empty. A good use of different locations to mix up the look of the film which also helped with pace. Overall a thought provoking documentary with a clear voice. Congratulations. Our next award is for Arts and Feature Journalist of the Year and judging this category is Sean Defoe. Sean has had an established career in journalism since he left DCU. Uh, he was also manager of DCU FM when I was in the first year in 2014. His career has spanned from Spin to Today FM to News Talk to RTE where he currently is the group political correspondent for Communicore Media. Uh, we are so glad to have Sean back this year to judge the award as he is the winner of five previous hybrid awards. Judging Arts and Feature Journalist of the Year is Sean Defoe. Hello MPS from a sunny Leinster house um, on a weird Zoom call hybrids awards show thing. Um, I actually feel incredibly gutted for you that you won't get to get absolutely hammered all in person and uh, hug and kiss and slobber all over each other as is the usual uh, honour tradition of course 
at the the hybrid awards but hopefully um you, you'll still have a good night and a few of you are having a few uh, sneaky cans of, of jack slats anyway and uh, this year I, i'm uh, judging the arts and features journalist of the year and i have to say some of the entries were were absolutely fantastic i i actually learned things which i wasn't overly uh, expecting when when uh, i got all of the entries in i i thought there was really really high standard this year and um, some fantastic journalism some fa fantastic stories as well being told which is really what journalism is all about uh, particularly when it comes to the likes of features and it comes to this kind of journalism so well done to all the entries it was a really really tough decision uh, to pick this year uh, i wish i had a drum to roll but I i'll just get into a did a uh, runner-up uh, and a winner and so the uh, the runner-up was onio boyle who uh, i thought really fantastic top class entry and it was really a coin toss um between the the final two but the winner of this year's hybrid award is peter o'neill Moving on to our next award, and this award is for Website of the Year. Judging this category is Matthew Lynham. Matthew Lynham graduates DCU with a Bachelor of Science in Multimedia, and since graduating, he's been working as a content creator with Imagine Broadband, responsible for producing TV and digital advertising campaigns. He also is a co-founder of Beam, which is a creative agency specialising in web design and content creation. Judging Website of the Year is Matthew Lynham. Hi everyone, hope you're all enjoying yourselves so far. Uh, I just want to say a huge thanks for having me here this year. The hybrids are a brilliant event and it's uh, an honour to be a part of it this year. If anyone's wondering why the lad who topped up leap cards at the help desk is presenting an award, uh, it's because I actually graduated from multimedia and got a job in my field. I am now working with uh, Imagine Broadband and uh, I'm also co-founder of Beam, uh, a creative agency where we specialise in web design. So for website of the year, um, what I consider a good website is a website that does what it's meant to do. It should be designed in a way that suits its purpose while working across all platforms such as mobile and laptops. It should still however have a sense of character and should give the user a good insight into the style of the brand it represents. Our winner managed to do exactly that. They built a website that was a brilliant introduction to the society that they represent. It worked well on different platforms, uh, it was extremely functional. You were able to make bookings, get updates, you were even able to pay the four euro society fee online. So I'm delighted to present the award for website of the year to Lorcan O'Reilly. Moving on to our next category, and this is an exciting one, podcast of the year. Judging this category is Cassie Delaney. Cassie Delaney is a media professional with over 10 years of experience in producing, editing, and distributing media for Ireland's leading brands. Cassie is the queen of podcasts, uh, and within a year of launching her podcast before brunch, Cassie had formed her own company, Tall Tales Podcasts, which now produces some of the country's most entertaining content. Cassie is a regular creator as part of the Rogue Collective, an online publication creating intelligent content for women by women. Having been recognised by the Digiday Awards, the Content Marketing Awards, and named as one of the Sunday Business Post's 2018 Top 30 Under 30, we are absolutely excited and honoured to have her as part of our judging panel. Judging podcast of the year is Cassie Delaney. Hello, my name is Cassie Delaney and I'm the owner of Tall Tales Podcast and I had a fantastic time judging podcast of the year. I was totally blown away by the creativity, the production values and the themes that were coming up in the podcast. But one podcast stood out to me um, for its concept and its production. Um, and I think that this person, this creator, has hit on something really special, really, really enjoyable to listen to. And I'm delighted to announce that the podcast of the year is Clara Mooney's Scrapbook Time. We have reached our final award of the night, and this is a good one. Our final award of the night is for Irishor Neblina, and judging this award is Ala Magicadummi. Ola is a multi-award winning media professional who is currently working for RTE. She is currently working as a digital content creator, podcast producer and editor and Tuss Ocha reporter in RTE. Her work with the Irish language has achieved awards such as Railta Og and Blina in 2018 uh, and Ola's video documentary What Does Irishness Look Like went viral after its release in 2018. Judging Irish or Neblina, our final award for the night is Ola Magicadummi. 
Jeeve, Akorja, Jeeve, Grad of DCU, Hybrid, Skirmi, Lamagi, Miss Misha Ala, Majeka, Dubi, August is Misha, and Brett of the Category, Gershor, and Nablina, August is Fader, Lomara, and Dalta, and Vuig, and Category, Sha, Na, Rory, Egan, Kogordicus, Morlat, and Rory, Mahi, we're fan, and Sky May Ra, the Hair to Sheer fan, the Hail to Shock, Bishid, Ottawa, our fan, Hide to Sheed, Gamorlum, Bishid, our Orange Kind, our fan, Akan Kian, the Vel, a Hahalum, Na. Creek link on lyric, we say shin, just co grand, very we say spreel, the fecund tear, August, we say shin on the can, the low, a ha hello, kind of raw, we say co moshin, August, keen to go higher, go on a wall at a mock of just the man, to on tan look, August, or kind of well, August, come on, so mahu or each, August, come on, August, bodagi, glare salt, as an eager. And that is it. We have reached the end of the night. Thus concludes the DCU Hybrid Student Media Awards 2020. And what a night. What a fantastic celebration of all the content that you have worked so tirelessly to create all year. I said it at the very beginning. I say it all the time. The hybrids is the pinnacle of the DCU calendar. It really um, squashes up everything all into one night of what the year has been. The content that you have made and produced has been around what goes on in the year um, and it's, it's such a fantastic thing that brings all of that creative energy together and such a, a celebration of it so I really hope you've enjoyed tonight's uh, event I've really enjoyed being here with you uh, thank you for having me um, of course it's a little bit different this year this year has been so crazy so crazy such a roller coaster of course Ideally, we would have all liked to have been together in a lovely venue, hugging, embracing, getting absolutely sloshed afterwards that you're probably going to do anyway. You probably already are. Who are we kidding here? Um, but hopefully things go back to next year, things go back to normal next year and we can celebrate properly. Um, but well done to you. It doesn't matter if you won an award tonight or not. The fact that you have engaged in the year, that you have been a part of MPS, of MPS be it um dcu tv dcu fm the blog anything if you've engaged in the year which you have because you're here well done it's the best part about dcu it's the best part about mps that the the fact that we get to bring all this content together throw it on into one event listen to it talk about it experience it and share it together it's the best night of the year so i really hope you've enjoyed um and congratulations if you did win an award if you didn't it don't matter I entered the hybrids every year when I was in DCU and only one of my final year. So, you know, you'll get there. It's fine. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I have really enjoyed it tonight um, being your host, your virtual host. Um, and one of the things that is part of being a virtual host is you don't know if I have been wearing pants tonight. And you will never know. You know, that's just it's just fun. I will give you one thing, though. I was wearing sliders, two sliders, uh, so that was good, that was cosy. Whether or not I was wearing pants is up to your imagination. If you don't want to imagine me wearing, not wearing pants, please don't. I will never force you to do that. Um, I hope you've enjoyed tonight. Thank you so much for having me. Go off and celebrate in a responsible and safe way. Um, I'm not gonna harp on it being safe because you're all legends and you are doing your bit to protect each other and protect the world, the crazy world that we're living in right now. Um, thank you for having me. I hope you've enjoyed tonight. I did say at the start of the night that I would share with you another thing that I learned during lockdown. I played you my rendition of the Irish traditional 50 cent candy shop that I learned on the tin whistle at lockdown, at the start of lockdown. So I will share with you what I learned before I learned 50 Cent Candy Shop. It's more upbeat, it's more celebratory, so that's why I've left it to the end of tonight's event. If you can guess it, by all means go for it. I'm not gonna promise anything, because it's kind of a difficult one. So let's celebrate. Another traditional Irish classic jig, Endor, pump it up. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I hope you've had a wonderful night. Go on and celebrate and we'll see you soon.